Well, it is Friday afternoon. I'm D. Scott, and uh, this is the continuation of the author interview series. We have just got great folks today. We have Diane Bogino. She is going to be joining us and talking about her book, and I'm looking forward to that. And I do want to talk about uh, a lot of people will be coming back to the workplace soon, and everyone's been used to adjusting their own temperature facilities managers around the country uh, have to deal with all these people coming back in and everyone wants to fiddle with the thermostat and stat guard covers are important but here's the cool thing about stat guard plus they have this little combination lock in there you don't have to worry about keys uh, the office managers the facilities folks uh, can install these and just use the little three digit code uh, so this, uh, the StatGuard Plus is a great way to control your heating and cooling in the office place as more people are coming back. Thank God that we have the vaccine and we're not wearing masks as much anymore and people can come back together. I'm excited about uh, all of this. But uh, StatGuard Plus, make sure you click on it. We have it in the carousel. Uh, you can find those there. But the important thing right now is Diane. <laughs> Welcome, Diane. I am glad that you're here. This is the author interview series, and uh, I'm here in Oregon. It's uh, right here at midday. We're just uh, right in the middle of lunch, but you are not in the Pacific time zone. Where Where are you at? And tell people about who Diane is. Uh, well, I am in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are having storms today, so I hope we don't get cut off. <laughs> I think we're getting some of that hurricane that's coming through. Um, but I'm Diane Bogino, President of Performance Strategies. I um, do team building and coaching, and I am happy to be with you today. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, and and we get to talk about your book, and so I'm 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 highlighting it here, finding your bootstraps, and you've got eleven strategies to overcome this whole victim mentality, um, and we'll, I kind of want to go into. To some of this the story there which i have to admit it's it's tough to read yeah. um because i know it's a real human being it's you that's there but when you're reading it it's a young child a vulnerable child and um so that that it's tough because i know it's real um but the beautiful thing about your book is is that you overcome you have overcome uh you're living that out today and in your book, it, you give people some some great tools, um, and so that's that's really exciting that that there's a great uh, conclusion to the story. Um, but I I just want to talk about this book came out uh, a number of years ago. I think what two thousand sixteen. I think sixteen. I think so. Fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's it's been out there for a while. Yeah. And. Um, so a part of what's what's really fun about these all these author interview series is kind of the journey. How how was it that that you decided to publish the book and the title and all that stuff? What 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 brought this all about? Well, I didn't want people who have gone through what I've gone through to languish in the past and suffer like I suffered. I did a lot mm. of the work myself in terms of getting over what I had gone through. And um, actually the book needs updating because in 2018, um, I think you're right, I'm sorry, 205 it was. Uh, in 2018, I discovered through DNA that the man mentioned in the book is not my biological father. I'm actually oh, from wow. the Perry family, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, um, but they invited me to a family reunion. It was quite overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, wow. th yeah, that was basically it. I did not want people to go through what, what I went through, and I wanted to give them tools so that they could manage quickly. Um, and, and, Scott, here's the really sad part, is that my story is not the worst story out there. Mm -hmm. There are far worse stories than mine. But... I want to give everyone the message that you have something inside you that you can pull from mm -hmm. to help you deal with any tragedy, any hardship that you go through. And there are ways and means and people and all kinds of resources out there that that you just are unaware of until you start digging. 
Right. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, the, your story is is challenging, and I know that 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 there are worse ones out there, and and there are some that are not so bad, and maybe people don't feel like they have as much to overcome. But I know that Chick Fil A has a, a great video that people can see out there on YouTube. Um, that's a training video, and it's called something like "Everyone Has a Story," and it kind of goes through from the employees to the customers, and it gives them a little glimpse into what people are dealing with and i i know that this is absolutely true that everybody has something that they're dealing with absolutely or have dealt with mm -hmm. yeah and even today i mean the what's been going on today has affected people um in so many different ways and when you stop to think about what some people have had to go through with this people who live alone and don't really have family mm -hmm. around them it's, it really has been a challenge. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, I've, I've seen, I'll, I'll say kind of through the, through this whole pandemic, I've kind of seen, uh, three different responses. And one of, one of them is that victim mentality, right? That, that, that this has been done to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've seen people who just took it as an opportunity to, to binge, binge watch, uh, entire, uh, multi-year seasons of programs and, uh, and just fell into the, uh, I'll say into the entertainment trap. Um, and then I saw other people who, who even through the hardships of maybe losing a job or even a business or family members, uh, that they have found ways to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people have taken this as a productivity, uh, time have written books, Yep. I started my podcast. I got re inspired from a group that I'm in to start. Mm -hmm. I had done this podcast years ago and had let it go and started it again uh, about a year ago. And um, it's really been uh, exciting. And I've met a lot of interesting people like you. <laughs> and uh, it's brought me some uh, attention to my business that I wouldn't ordinarily have. I'm very bad about not putting myself out there because I'm, I'm shy. I know my family and friends are saying, yeah, right. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I really am, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that wants to stay in the background, but you can't do that if you have a business. And I know mm -hmm. you, you talk about business networking in your business. And yep. if you don't do that and put yourself out there, they're not going to know you're there. Yeah. You know, it's it's our culture. We really don't like people who brag about themselves, right? We just we just don't appreciate that. But in business, it's kind of hard to say. Ah, you know, maybe you, you have to be definitive, right? You have to be certain that you can help people, that you solve someone's problems, and that you're competent to do so. And I always found what I found is is that there's there's two sides of this. Uh, competent delivery uh, and one is confident and the other is arrogant and what i found was is that arrogant people take but confident people give and when you're confident in the business and the solution that you have you're not there to take money from people you're there to solve a problem mm -hmm. and and we should all be paid i mean we want to be paid right <laughs> for the work that we do and and that's fair but but doing it from a position of giving is so different. Yeah, you know, that's a, you mentioned something that I've had a hard lesson learning. And of course, growing up like I did, I had zero confidence, zero, yeah. <laughs> zilch, nada. People will not buy from you if you are not confident mm -hmm. about the work that you do and the product that you have and the service that you provide. And that's something that I've had to learn. And and you're right. We, you're an MBA. I have a master's. We've worked hard. We've done some work to better ourselves, improve ourselves, to learn our craft. I, you know, I just went through a four-hour certification on Zoom yesterday. Mm. Oh <laughs> so, wow! Yeah, <laughs> on on EQ, and I don't have a high EQ, but I learned how to be a nice person yesterday. So well, I'm good. Very good. <laughs> And I want to explore that a little bit, but keep going. Well, that that was just the, the idea that people only see, it's like the iceberg, right? They mm -hmm. don't see the, all the sweat and the hard work down that's under the water. 
they only right. see, oh, look how successful that person is at the top, you know, and they get all jealous, but they don't see you up late at night holding your eyes up with two pits. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. I remember seeing this poster years ago and it was uh, Jerry Rice and Joe Montana. And it just said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. That's right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's the you know, it's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, so uh, lifelong education. I mean, this is this is a this is an important thing. Um, and in your book, I mean, you talk about the childhood, um, just the difficulties. And I don't I'm, I don't want to go into too many details because I want people to read the book. I want people to get it because it it reads really really well. I mean, it's well, it's you. you you did a great job writing. Uh, and I know you had uh, partners, you had a good editor, and I encourage oh, people yes. that if they want to write a book, and I'll, I'll just break for the moment, too, to say this is absolutely ever, the greatest time ever to be alive. And that if you want to write a book, you don't need uh, you don't need to find a publisher. You don't need an agent. You just need the willingness to get down there and actually do the writing. Uh, but don't do it yourself. Find people to help you, to encourage you to keep you accountable uh, and, and a good editor to make sure that it, it flows well and everything's good. And, and, um, but yeah. reading your book, obviously um, there's a heartfelt story that's in there that translates. Um, and you went through these hardships and I'm going to jump way ahead. Uh, and you went to college. Uh, you were uh, as a, we used to call them uh, older than average students. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you started right. later, which I think is a, also a great encouragement to people. Right. Yeah. I um, my first marriage uh, had ended in divorce, and um, I had always thought I was too stupid to go to, to school. Mm. And really and truly, that's why I never went to college. I thought they would never uh, let me in because I would just be too stupid. But it's a business; they'll take your money. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> so, so I did. And um, when I got some of my entrance papers back, I was in the honors class in English, not so much in math, but in English. And I thought, well, they've made a mistake. They're the stupid mm -hmm. ones, you know. <laughs> so, so I <laughs> got <funny>. my, <laughs> I got my undergrad in psychology, and then I went back and got my master's in industrial organizational psychology. I figured if I could say it, I could pass it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> so that has just been an interesting, interesting journey. And I love to learn. I'm one of those people. There are other people that just like to learn things when they need them. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I, I think we're alike that I just want to learn everything about everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's um, and in today's world. I know that uh, in many cases, uh, college is not the right solution. Uh, for many of our students that are graduating. Um, and there's there's trades and there's other ways to go. Um, to me, there's still some benefit to the to the university experience that goes beyond the checking off the classes and getting the credits to walk with your gown and um, in mortarboard. the the connections that you build in those friendships and um, when you go to college and you're young, you kind of have this in um, in common. So we just had a comment. Kim says, I feel like I'm watching Meryl Streep live. So <laughs> I that's, good. that's good. I, I, I love thank that. You. Uh, Kim, Whoever thank you, you so are. Much. Yeah, Kim. Yeah, we just uh, thank you. And uh, I assume he was talking about me and not you, Scott. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I would be out. certain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, Kim, for that. Um, uh, when you go and you, you go to college and you start right after high school or nearly thereafter, you have a lot in common with people of, of the same age. When you went, uh, what about, um, what about yourself when you went, how did that, how did you feel? How did you fit in or, or not fit in? I, I can, I'm, okay. I'm going to brag on myself a little bit here. I do have the ability Both to get confidence because you're a giver. <laughs> I know you, Diane, you are a giver. So go um, ahead. I'm, I have the ability, it's a gift to get along with anybody because like you, I like people a great deal. I want to know about people, how I can help them. And of course, when you get into school, a lot of people need help. 
<laughs> with with work, with projects, with yeah. understanding uh, things in class. And uh, of course, I already had a lot of history, so I knew about a history. <laughs> if anybody needed help in a history class, you know. So um, fortunately, uh, people accepted me and would come to me. And in fact, someone just contacted me the other day and asked me to coach them. Somebody I had, oh, wow. yeah, I went to school with to get my master's with just out of the clear blue sky. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that's rewarding. That is rewarding. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things. So uh, I started college uh, right out of high school and ran out of money. And uh, at the time it was hard to find a job, but turns out the Air Force was hiring. Uh, so then I joined the Air Force, came back. And uh, so I went back in as a, also as a, I'll say an older than average student. And I found that I was much more prepared for college, being a little bit more mature, having a little more experience. And uh, honestly, some drive that says, I need this. <laughs> right. Had a little more knowledge about what the world is about and what's needed mm -hmm. out there. The MBA is yeah. very important. And, you know, you made a good point a while ago, Scott, about college is not for everyone. In fact, I've heard someone say that really we've done a disservice to the trades industry in pounding college into people's heads so much. Right. And and to a point that that's right, because the trades industry is really important uh, to the country and to, to people trying to uh, run a house. You know, you need repairs and it's difficult to find mm -hmm. good people to do those jobs. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that I, I don't want people to get the idea that they absolutely have to go to college to have a worthwhile career and, and their life's work because there are plenty of opportunities in America. In fact, when I, there's a video on my YouTube channel, I used to have a neighbor who had escaped communist Cuba when Castro mm -hmm. took over, stowed mm -hmm. away on a ship, came here with absolutely nothing, uh, started an electrical business. He was an electrician. And one day he said to me, he says, you know, Diane, if people aren't making money in America, they're not trying. That has a great yeah. perspective, isn't it? Yes, yes. And I, I, I start my YouTube channel with that. That's my intro video. It just that has just stuck with me all these years because there is so much opportunity here, mm -hmm. and I, I just want people to appreciate that. Yeah. And so I'll say you have the freedom to both succeed and to fail. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. and and I and I know, and I am a huge fan of people starting a side business, even if you have a full-time job uh, and a family, I still encourage people to start some sort of a side business because everyone has expertise and um, you solve problems for people. So I, I always encourage people to, to, to start a side business. And it's um, in this entrepreneurial uh, phase that we're in, uh, being promoted by a lot of shows like Shark Tank and and these other things that make it uh, a little more glamorous, if you will, uh, to be an entrepreneur, uh, even as a side gig. Mm -hmm. And one of the phrases that it comes out is fail fast. A lot of people want to say fail fast, but I'll, I'll just tell you, I'm not a big fan of failing fast, but I am a big fan of making a decision quickly. And if you get involved in something and it's not working out, then just decide this isn't going to work out and and move on. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a big fan of failure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like failing either, but I agree with you on the side gig because look what's happened. People had nothing to fall back on in many cases, and some did, uh, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. And you, you always have got to have something in the basket, you or another basket, let me say, because you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You've got to have... Uh, some backup system. Uh, now, so I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And that's why, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have multiple streams of income, as they call it. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, there's books, coaching, speaking, training, all of those things uh, so that we create multiple streams of income. So if something's not doing well at a particular time, then we have something else to fall back on. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I'm a huge fan of that. And, um, the story that I tell was way back, and this was a lesson that I learned when I was in banking. So I was working full-time as a banker, 
And I had a client that was a driver for UPS. And so she was always out on the road making deliveries. And it was a fine, it's a good job, you know, mm -hmm. being a driver, a delivery for, for UPS is a great job. Well, she and some of her friends also created a side business. And uh, so they would work on that on the weekends. And basically what they did is, is they would make these wreaths out of dried flowers and go to these different shows and sell them. And it was going pretty good. And being in UPS and shipping, she knew how to get those dried flowers uh, arrangements to show up so that when people opened them up, they were a beautiful wreath, not a pile of broken, dead, uh, dried flowers, right? Well, uh, she had been working on it for a number of years. And then one day she fell going out of her truck and uh, got hurt and wasn't able to to be a driver anymore. And because she had already invested time in creating this business, she was in, able to move full time into that. And this was pretty early on in my life. And so I, 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 I just remember finding that as a great model to say, look, if she hadn't, if she said, someday I'm going to start this business, it would have been too late. Right, right. Someday is not a day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah, um, yeah people, um, that's the other thing. You have, you can dream, you can talk, you can put things on paper, but if you don't take action, nothing's going to happen. Right. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed at the bottom of my email, I, my quote that I came up with is instead of taking the time to whine, make the time to take action. Yes, there you go. So I, love I don't care how small you think the step <laughs> is, it's going to get you started. I think this is something that people don't realize, Scott, that once you make that first step, so yes. many things start opening up for you. And it, right. it just creates a whole new world for you. But if you don't take that first step, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, that is so true. And I often tell people, too, because we one of the things I talk about is business networking. And people think that just means going to events and things like that. But I always tell people, you already have a fabulous network. You know lots of people. And by the way, those people want you to succeed. They want Diane to win. As long as they know what problem you solve and, and who you solve it for, then they can say, oh, Diane, I was just talking to Roger and you can, I know you can help him. Can I make an introduction? And you're saying, yes, you can. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yes. I'm sure like you have done that many times and it's a, it's a joy. Uh, mm -hmm. I love bringing people together and get, letting them put their heads together to solve problems for, for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people starting a business on the side, whether it's um, as long as it doesn't compete, right? As long as it's uh, within, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, working with, with your folks and make sure that everything's all good, but doing some sort of a business on the side and then letting people know, this is what I do. I fix computers. I, whatever it is, I, I do repairs around homes or uh, fix lawnmowers. I mean, there's just tons of things that people have skills at. And I always remind people, I go, well, if you're thinking about starting a job and you don't know where to start, look back, out, look back over the last few months. Where was it that you were able to help somebody? Because they asked you, hey, Scott, can you help me do this? And then I solved their problem. And then I asked myself, do other people get paid to do this? If so, you might have a business, right? That's right. There's a clue right there, right? <laughs> and you would be amazed at what people pay for. I mean, look at what people buy, pet rocks. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, the, the pet rocks is one that I, I love because there was a, a guy that many years ago, and I think it was in the back of popular science, and this was, you know, pre-internet and all that stuff. So he bought a little ad in the back of popular science that said, uh, mail me your dead pet rocks and I'll bury them. <laughs> and so he built a little garden wall in his backyard with these, uh, all oh, these boy. dead pet rocks that people sent to him. I love it. That yeah. is great. That is yeah. great. You know, yeah. th th there's all kinds of opportunities. There was a guy, I don't know if you remember Skylab. This is back in the seventies back. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, eventually it fell 
to the ground, fell to Earth, right? Yes, yeah. And um, so, of course, NASA's tracking this on the news and all this stuff. Well, there was a guy that made money off of Skylab falling. And so what he did is he, he took aluminum foil and folded it into the classic newspaper boat hat <laughs> and then would mail them out to people as Skylab protective helmets. Oh, and, and he was selling it to them. And he, and, but you, you have to have a gimmick and this is obviously a gimmick, right? But what he said is he goes, uh, if you, while wearing the Skylab protective helmet, actually get hurt by falling Skylab debris, I'll give you a full money back uh, guarantee. <laughs> well, <laughs> people are buying these things because they, you know, put them on and go into work and they're like, what is it? Oh, I got my Skylab protect. You're right. You know, it's just kind of a, it's a goofy thing. Yeah. But he took advantage of a moment and he made a few bucks and he had fun and he got a national, he got national press. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. So we got to come up with a gimmick. Okay. You and me, we'll work with that. <laughs> you know, I, um, I think. Scott's digging in his treasure chest there. What's he going to come up with? <laughs> Our host has left the planet. Here he is. Yeah, okay. so uh, digging into my <laughs> digging into my bag of tricks over here. Um, back in 2017, and, and you may remember the solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So in August, and I can tell you it was August 21st of 2017, the solar eclipse came across the United States. And it happened to go right over the top of my house. Uh, because it came in landfall here in Oregon, and it went all the way across coast to coast. It was pretty spectacular. And if anyone saw it, now I know why people save up money and fly around the world to go see these things, because it's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. Well, I was telling businesses, there is money to be made on the path of totality. You know, so... I was out for a walk with my wife one Friday evening, and I said, God, I'm a smart guy. I should take my own advice. And so I spent the weekend uh, researching and writing and sketching, and I actually made a little video. And then on that following Monday morning, I met with a friend of mine who, is, who has a printing company. And I said, uh, Jesse, look, the eclipse is coming uh, in a number of months. There's money to be made. Here's some ideas. Well, the big thing to sell for the Eclipse was the Eclipse glasses, right. right? And so they were branded. So banks were handing them out and all these things. They'll you know, put their logo on it and so forth. So everyone was selling these Eclipse glasses. So I'm in Oregon. I'm in the Northwest. And so uh, we decided to create uh, Eclipse glasses ourselves. Uh, but we are in microbrew territory, so we did pints. We oh. did, we did, yeah. So we were selling uh, Eclipse glasses as well, but they were pints. <laughs> so I, I, I scabbed out this ugly graphic, and we had a designer who, you know, actually did a good job. And then she made this infographic for us with these different things that you should that you would find. And then I went out to bars and restaurants. I sold them by the case to people who were having. Uh, backyard parties and said, you know, eclipse parties and said, oh, these will be great. I'll buy a case of them so that everyone's got a little souvenir. <laughs> and so I would go to these retail outlets, you know, with the cases and say, you know, hey, we've got these things. We've made them right here uh, in the Willamette Valley. And um, and I'd show them, I go, look, we've got these eclipse glasses and, uh, you know, commemorates the date, shows the landfall in Oregon and the path of the eclipse and they go and because we're uh in oregon not only do we like to drink beer but we're smart <laughs> <laughs> i love it we, that is great. not only did we have fun but we made money selling something and so as you said you've got to find those opportunities right. and the pandemic provided opportunities it took things away but it also provided opportunities for people and this i'm just going to i'm going to i'm going to go back to your book because um i mean you're talking about these uh 11 ways 
to avoid victim thinking. And, and as I said, one of the things people kind of fell into this victim uh, through the pandemic, whether their jobs or something happened to them. And, and so I'd like to go back and kind of talk a little bit about some of these strategies that, that you have that people can implement because your book really is a workbook. It helps people, gives them solid tools on what they can do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the biggest one, and, and it may be the first one in there, is is the negative self-talk. And uh, mm. that's a big one for many people. And it's inexpensive to get over. It's relatively quick to get over. And when you have some negative thought coming into your mind, you have to stop it. You have to stop it immediately. And you have mm. to say something positive. I was so bad at it. I had to say stop out loud to myself. Wow. Yes. To make myself stop having these negative thoughts. That's not to say I don't ever have one, of course, but it's not as bad as it, it used to be at all. I mean, um, you know, even at one time there was suicide on, on the horizon. Mm. Uh, it was a strong thought for me, but um uh, thank goodness I got over that. Uh, I, I guess. remember reading that in, yeah, the, in so, the book. Yeah. Um, you just si simply cannot degrade yourself. There are enough people out there that will do it for you. Okay. Yeah. So, but you have to value yourself first because if you don't mm -hmm. value yourself, and as you say, have that confidence in yourself, no one else is going to either. So it must start with you. And that is one simple technique to do is to stop the negative thinking. Mm -hmm. And you can put um, things around for you to, to, to say to yourself, you know, that you can see every day uh, inspirational thoughts that can also help you along with that as well, as well as your goals. That's a great way to do goals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Scott, that's another thing people say, I don't want to set goals, you know, they're just going to change or, you know, I'm probably not going to reach them or whatever. But sure. here's the thing that people need to realize is that goals are what pull us through life. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have something to reach for, we're going to be stagnant. Again, I don't care how small the goal may be, but I encourage you to have those big goals, but have some goals that you're going to try to strive for because that will pull you through and get you through many of these obstacles that we face in life. Yep. You know, I had that uh, quote on my website uh, for a long time between Alice of Alice in Wonderland and the uh, caterpillar. <laughs> because uh, Alice asked the caterpillar which way she should go. And the caterpillar says, well, where do you want, where do you want to go? <laughs> and she goes, well, it doesn't really matter as long as I get somewhere. And he's like, well, you're, that's bound to happen is if, you, if you go far enough. That's right. And that's you'll, people without goals. That's right. You're going to get yeah. somewhere. But will it be where you need to be? Very likely not. Right? Very likely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I, um, and, I, and I think about this. So this, this negative self-talk and uh, having goals, as I, as I think about this, and you, you study psychology and then got your master's in, in uh, organizations as well, that, that there's actually physical problems that manifest when we continually have these negative self-thoughts. Oh, yeah. Uh, the stress, uh, you can have uh, gut problems, uh, even pain, uh, headaches, things of that nature, the depression, mm. uh, yeah. which keeps you from functioning the way that uh, to your ultimate level. And, um, you know, the stress, of course, as we all know, can get so bad that it, it would call, cause you to have to have some medical intervention. And, you know, you don't want to do that. It's just the, the mental, the, fragil the fragility of the, the mental system. Uh, and I think COVID has brought that more to the forefront than ever mm -hmm. before. Sure. Even in my own mind. And, um, you know, thank goodness I'm, I'm a stubborn person, I guess, that, that I'm not going to let these things get to me. But everybody is not that lucky. Everybody is not that fortunate. 
and and need some help and there's nothing wrong with getting help my gosh i had years of therapy myself come on you know and I, and I went to therapy for years and uh, I would lay off for years, but sometimes then I would have to go back and there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Everybody needs help. Even if it's a coach or a mentor, if you're trying to build your career, for example, you can't do it yourself. You're, you're not super person. Okay. I'm sorry yeah. <laughs> to break the news. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Hey, I want to continue on with the, uh, with these strategies here. I do want to say thank you to, uh, the folks over at Stack Art Plus, and these are this was actually invented by my friend David Osk, and he was a facilities manager for years in a large telecom co uh, company, and they would have these thermostat covers to protect the uh, thermostats and keep people from messing around with them. And one of the things that I found because I got a buddy that is a, a an HVAC guy. He says that uh, when you turn these thermostats down too much and the air conditioning units get going, there's a, actually can build up ice in the compressor units and burn it out. And then you're going to be suffering uh, because you won't have the air conditioning. And so these thermostat covers are great. But again, the, the key that, that David had when they, when they invented this was this, this little combination lock uh, on the stack guard cover that doesn't have... You don't have to worry about a lost key and you can change the code anytime uh, once you open it up and you know it, you're able to, to set that uh, and just protect that. And so as people are coming back to work, it's uh, this is just a, just a great thing to, to install. So make sure you click on those, add those into your cart and uh, use those in your workplace. Uh, so just great to be uh, partnering here with StackGuard Plus. So. Uh, Diane, thanks. That might for, save a lot of marriages too. So, yeah. you know, they were talking about, he actually created some commercials that was like, uh, protect the things that are important. <laughs> and one of them was like rolls of toilet paper. So I don't know <laughs> that, uh, that would actually fit in there. But uh, <laughs> since we just went through this pandemic and uh, everyone was clutching at their, uh, right. their, uh, their supply. So, right, exactly. <laughs> so this uh the resilience I, I i really love these because again you have practical strategies and what i have found over the years is that people are amazingly resilient uh you went through some some uh, horrific uh stuff and talking to you today people wouldn't know what's what's behind there but it's because um human beings are very resilient um but it's great to have these strategies of things that you can actually do, uh, right. like stop the negative talk, like have goals. What are what are some of the other strategies that that people can implement? Uh, one thing is very simple. One, make choices. We have the ability to make choices, hmm. and um, you you just have to sometimes ask yourself which is going to be more beneficial for me to do. Should I go this route or that route? What what are going to be the consequences of this? Mm -hmm. And as I said, you can even talk to a coach about ways to go in, in your life, but make the better choice. Some people mm -hmm. don't do that. People who um, have been abused as children oftentimes wind up in crime, in prison, as prostitutes, mm -hmm. uh, on drugs. But those are choices you make. Sure. You need to not choose that route because it's just going to end in disaster. So make better choices for yourself. Again, valuing yourself and where you want to wind up. Um, you know, you made the mention a while ago about um, things that people can do. I, uh, in career coaching, sometimes I will ask people when they're, when they're kind of stuck, what did you pretend to be when you were seven years old? Believe mm -hmm. it or not, that will give you a clue. So now we can begin making choices Mm -hmm. and setting goals and going down a better path. Right. So it it's not rocket science, people. I hate to, you know, burst your bubble, but it, it's pretty simple. <laughs> right. Well, you know, over the years I've always found that the best teachers are the ones that really what they what they've actually done is is provide language and structure around what I already knew. Right. It was it 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 but I I couldn't pull it together. I couldn't define what it was i couldn't put the pieces together although they were there 
they just gave language to it and it became clear. And so right. it's, it may not be rocket science, but it, you do need some outside assistance. You need someone yeah. to hold you accountable. Oh, well, that's true too. Yeah. Sometimes we just can't connect the dots and then sometimes we get discouraged or uh, we start failing or faltering. And yes, that's when we need that accountability and things like mastermind groups yeah. uh, are just mm -hmm. great. Uh, I don't know if you have one, but uh, I have one. I'm in several mm -hmm. and they've just been uh, a great benefit to me. Uh, it's just simply a group of like-minded people for those uh, in your audience who are not familiar with a mastermind. And uh, you can have them for business, for parenting, mm -hmm. um, anything, education, trying to learn something, uh, cooking. I don't care what it is. You can create a mastermind group around it and you can find one or you can create one. Either yeah, way. I, yeah, that's a, I, I am a huge proponent of mastermind groups. And uh, I, I do have a mastermind that that I run, that uh, I co I co-lead with a with Russ Hedge, and that has yeah. been so important. But I'm also a, another member of a, of a paid mastermind organization called Iron Sharpens Iron, and uh, I I pay a fee every month for that. And I uh, will tell people that it I could I could lease a very very nice automobile uh, for what I pay every month for that mastermind. Mm. But I I've been in it for over two years. And being a member of an organization like that is absolutely the best. And I'll say specifically this, uh, this, this Iron Sharpens Iron group, it's been the best investment that I've made in my business, personal, and spiritual life. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what I would have done over these last two years uh, without it. And every week we meet and then you have conversations in between time, uh, but you have committed people like that, and it's essentially peer mentoring. Mm -hmm. But um, the impact that it will have on your life is huge and probably immeasurable. Yes, yes. Uh, for me, you know, I, I was on one this afternoon, and um, the, when you see what other people do as well and what they accomplish, it's inspiring. It's quite inspiring. And, and you think, well, gosh, I could do that. Mm -hmm. So that's very helpful to me because, you know, the first thought is, I, I can't do that. Or how would I do that? And mm -hmm. that's the other thing is you, you learn logistically how to do things from other people in these mastermind groups, which is awesome because you have to pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, as I say, it's it's amazing what we can do when we network the supercomputers between our ears. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the six inches between our ears is often what stops us quicker than anything. <laughs> so um, mastermind groups, definitely something uh, mm -hmm. I support. I'm glad that, you, that you, you also encourage people to be involved in those. And if you don't have one, that, that you, then make one. And, and it's not hard to do. Uh, reach out, talk to Diane. She'll help you start a mastermind group. Um, what are some of the other? What are some of the other uh, strategies and techniques that uh, people can do to help overcome the victim thinking? You have to um, hang around with people that will encourage you. You cannot hang around with people that put you down, mm. that poo poo your ideas that don't think you're worth the effort or the investment that you need to make in yourself. I don't care if they're family. I don't care if they're friends. Yeah. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter. You can't, what is, what is that saying about uh, the five people you hang around with? Or yeah. Something? Jim Rohn. That's yeah. Jim, Jim Rohn. Yeah. You are the, we are the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. Yes. And, and the books you read and uh, you know, garbage in garbage out. Yeah. So, you have got to hang around with people that you want to be like, people that inspire you. Uh, you've got to have some role models. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have people that might even be dead, but it's even better to have people that are alive. Yes. Uh, what is it? Six, six, uh, 
feet of separation or something, <laughs> especially these days. I mean, my goodness, you can mm. get in touch with almost anybody these days. And that's right. You may think you may hesitate to contact someone like like take you, Scott. They may say, well, Scott's this big showbiz guy. He's got his own <laughs> Amazon show. But I'm going to tell you something. You you reach out to Scott and he's like, hey, I'll be happy to help you. Here's what you do. Blah, 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 blah. You know, let's have a conversation Thank around you. that. I can't tell you how many 30 minute conversations I've had with people that mm -hmm. I've got another one coming up. But there's a young lady who wants to get in industrial organizational psychology and wants to know about that. So, yes, I have scheduled a conversation with her around that. Mm -hmm. People like to help people. Yeah. That's, it's so important and uh, cutting the negativity out of your life. And so we talked about taking the negative thoughts out, these, these downgrading thoughts of yourself. Uh, so replacing that with, with the positive. And then also the people who drag you down that don't believe in you, oh, uh, then they don't, I will say they don't deserve your time. <laughs> right. Love right? that. You know, it's, it's, uh, there are enough people, you know, we're, we're going to be hitting the 8 billion people mark on this planet, uh, pretty soon. So there's, there's a lot of folks out there and I, you need, you deserve, and they deserve, uh, to get together with the right folks. And if they're holding you back, in fact, I remember years ago, there was a consultant I worked with and he said, Scott, if you go to lunch and you come back, you go to lunch with somebody and you come back and you feel worse about yourself, about your job, about your life, never go to lunch with that person again. For sure. <laughs> he said, if you come back and you're charged up and you're ready to hit it and you feel great, he said, next time, buy that person lunch. Yeah. Great idea. Well put. Well put. Yes. So I, I, yeah, I love this. I love, I love just kind of uh, taking inventory and, and again, following Jim Rohn's advice. It says we are the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guarantee if you examine your life and if those that are watching uh, this show, if you kind of look back, take your calendar, go through Google or, or iCal or your paper calendar, whatever it is, go back and look where you spent time and think about what was your mindset before during and after, and especially a few days after. And um, Diane, you're, you're spot on. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, the other thing is, is persistence. Persisting, mm. finding those people, finding the right people, yeah. persisting with your goals. You know, uh, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful quote by Calvin Coolidge, our, I think he was our 16th president. And, uh, I would encourage anyone to take that quote and post it somewhere and read it every single day because it is more than anything. And that is, that is another one of the 11 steps yeah. I believe is uh, doing that persistence. Again, it's not rocket science, but mm -hmm. you got to keep at it. But these other things that we've talked about, the mastermind, getting around the right people and so forth, that will help you to be persistent. You know, it's, it, you, your book, does, it's full of great quotes. Um, <laughs> Uh, from from uh, presidents to authors uh, to to um, actors, playwrights, and uh, even even the author of the book is quoted <laughs> in there. And I just thought that, <laughs> that was it's great. It's very encouraging. I love the layout too because it's it kind of makes it easy to to to, um, to find some of these quotes and uh, just be inspired by them. Yeah. 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 You mentioned um, showbiz people. Um, you know, I, I did a uh, stint in, in showbiz about 15 minutes. Um, and somebody that felt the way I did about myself, found myself up runway fashion modeling, uh, being in a movie, doing commercials. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you can take yourself, when anybody can take themselves from that to doing something like that, from you know the past I had to, to doing that and I'm not bragging on myself I'm saying anybody can do that can make that big of a leap and even bigger mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to do that take what you have inside you and use it because I promise right. you it's there it is there I love that I love it um 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was Andy Warhol, right, that said that everyone's going to have 15 minutes of fame. Fame, that's um, right. I, 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 choose, I choose to use it uh, not all at once, just a, a minute here and a two minutes there. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to dole out my 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So yeah, these are these are great these are great strategies. And again, um, I encourage people. We, you know, we've highlighted the book in the carousel. Uh, click on the book and and take a look. Add it to cart. Uh, buy the book. Download it to Kindle. Whatever makes sense mm -hmm. for you. But the the again the thing that I really liked about the book is is that not only do we have this really gripping, compelling story of of your early life and then how you overcame these things. Um, but you're listing out these 11 strategies to, uh, to get rid of this victim thinking. And, um, and it's like a workbook. I mean, there's stuff to fill in, yeah. to take notes yeah. about. Right. And how was it that you decided to do that? Because most people would do that in, uh, separately, maybe in workshops or something like that. How, did, what, how was it that you decided to uh, add that into this book? Well, uh, some people would say I was dumb doing it that way because uh, I could have sold a separate book, right, <laughs> the workbook. So um, I just decided to do it all at once because I wanted them to have the information and I wanted them to have it right then and there and to mm -hmm. be able to work on it right then and there. I didn't want the books to get separated, to get lost, to say, well, I'll get to that later. No, it's right there. And, hey, if somebody wants me to come do a workshop on the book, give me a call. I'd be more than mm -hmm. happy to do that. Yeah. You know, what I found too is, is that in the old days, I would believe, don't tell people what you do. Don't show them what you don't. Don't give them the worksheets uh, because then they'll do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And and in a lot of cases, I think in most cases today, uh, books are not necessarily a, a big source of income, but they do lead yeah. to other sources of revenue, like mm -hmm. speaking opportunities or workshops or uh, individual coaching or group coaching, uh, whatever it is. There's there's great opportunities that books can lead to. Um, and so my, but as I was saying, in the old days, I thought, don't show people what you do. Don't give them these checklists like you've done in the book or the inventories or whatever it is, because then they won't hire you. But the, you know, it's truly the DIYers, the do-it-yourself folks, are going to do it themselves anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but the people that you want to work with, they're going to look at this and they go, yeah, this is great, but I really want to get deep into this. I really want to understand this. I need to hire Diane. Mm -hmm. That's true. And uh, you make another good point, Scott, that a lot of people will feel like, well, if I give people all of my good information in a blog or a book or a white paper or something like that, they won't hire me. But that is just not true. They, they think if, well, if this free stuff is that good, what must it be like to go through a workshop or something like that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a, there's a great video and I, I share this story uh, periodically because it's so good. You can watch Penn and Teller, the magicians and these guys, fabulous, right? So they do the traditional three cups and the little balls and it's hidden and it comes up and there's three balls and no balls and a big ball and all this stuff, right? I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. And you watch it and it's just amazing. And then they go in slow motion and they're going and they're telling you exactly what they did when they did it. And then you watch them and you go, yeah, I still can't do it. <laughs> then they repeat the whole process with clear cups. They replace the cups and they're clear and you can see it. Good and you go, you know what? You have given me everything I need to know, everything I need to know to do this myself. But if I was having an event and I could afford it, it's not going to be me. I'm going to hire a pen and teller. That's right. Right. That's right. Although they gave, they gave, you could say they gave it away. Yeah. Yeah. But it's what just, happens, we, you we can't just find beat their skill more. that they've developed over the years. That's the thing. You know, you have a skill and a talent and you've worked at it and worked at it and worked at it. I have all the people that we know have, and there's nobody that can do it better than you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and, and you're coming from, from uh, a place of knowledge and experience. That's right. So you have gone through this. You went through a lot of different struggles that I will say would have crushed and has crushed many people. 
and yet you you thrived uh, through this and um, and have come to this point where you're at today where you're able to, as you say, here's somebody that approached you and said, I'm interested in getting into this market into this, this organizational psychology. And she came to you because you have this experience, but you had to overcome, you had to get past uh, the victim uh, mm -hmm. mentality and realize that you actually do have something to offer. Yes. And everyone does, as you said, Scott, everyone has a story. Everyone has something they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's just, it's, um, uh, this goes back to a commitment I made back, I think it was at the end of 2011 and coming into 2012. And for that year, I was going to remind people how remarkable they are. And I just, and, and, but I never stopped because I continue to meet remarkable people. And, uh, and this goes back in, and I know you've studied in the psychology, the way we learn <laughs> is, mm -hmm. is that when we, when we repeat things, they become literally hardwired into our brains. So it's very easy to recall them. So you had a podcast, you kind of idled it, and then you came back to it. But you already knew what to do because it was mm -hmm. built in your brain because you had been doing it. But a person who has never had a podcast, it's like magic. How did you do that, Diane? <laughs> right? That's true. We, we look at other people and uh, we think, that's amazing. It's amazing. It's just hard work and sweat and learning. <laughs> but we we forget because it's you go, well, to do a podcast, you just do this, 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 and this because it's hardwired in your brain because you worked hard to get that knowledge, to get to mm. that point. Yeah. And um, but then you just like breathe out these answers and you think, well, isn't it common knowledge? But it is not common. It is actually quite remarkable that you know this, that you can do this and that you can create a podcast and bring in guests. And, um, and so my goal was really to, to help people remember you weren't born knowing how to be a podcaster, how to write books, how to change, uh, business directions, right? Um, you had to learn that and that is remarkable. Right. Yeah, I mean, there are so many, I mean, that's what life is, a series of changes. And mm -hmm. we have to learn to roll with the punches because there are going to be changes. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's just going to happen. That's the way oh, yeah. life is. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you know, it's, um, and I, I think you had some quotes in there about change because, in, and I'm all in favor of change because it is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the couple of quotes that I, I like from there, one of them is from uh, Edwards Deming, uh, the, the management guru who, who really created the Toyota system that so many in the U.S. <laughs> followed after he gave it to Toyota. Mm -hmm. uh, and his was uh, change is not or no, is it? Yeah. Change is not mandated or yeah, change is not necessary because survival is not mandated. That's right. <laughs> Let that sink in, people. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yeah. Change is not necessary because survival is not mandated. That's right. And um, just going through this last year and a half, and I have seen businesses fail because they were not able to adapt. Right. Um, they were not able to make the changes. Um, but those, uh, I, I tell a story about there was a Chinese restaurant in our area that we love to go there. But we couldn't because of the restrictions. And very quickly, although they were just a sit-down restaurant, uh, they cut a hole in the wall, put an awning out, and were handing the food out and put a sign up. And we were ordering on the phone, and they would text us when it's ready, and we'd take our food. And that restaurant is is thriving, mm -hmm. um, even in the midst of, of all of this chaos, whereas the restaurant uh, two doors down closed because they they didn't adapt right. and mm -hmm. and i know that's a very specific example but th i believe this is what you're talking about yeah. so we have same to thing make with, yeah same thing with speakers they uh mm. you know used to being on that stage and there was no stage to be on there uh, when the pandemic hit and so thank goodness for zoom <laughs> yeah know? but well, some and people I know couldn't adapt 
there are speakers who um, gave it up, right? They catch it and yeah. they go, well, I, I, I can't do this. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do something. I'm going to stop speaking. And then there's some other folks I know that went from giving uh, tens of speeches a year to hundreds of speeches a year because now they don't have to travel. So right. they could give they could give a talk three times in one day to right. three completely different audiences. Reach more people. They can reach more people. And sure. that's a good deal. Yeah, get your get your <laughs> message out to more people and help more people. That's right. Yeah. You know, because it, it's not always about making money. It's to me, it is about living a life that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um you know, it's the, it's the type of work you do, and people need to value the work that they do. I don't care what it is. It's going to help someone. And, you know, if you're going to be a ditch digger, be the best ditch digger you ever could be, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Value what you do. Yeah. You know, there's a very Japanese uh, thought, right, Was is that, is that whatever it is you do, you want to be the, the pinnacle of that profession. That's right. Um, whatever it is. And, and I, I, I think that's something that I would like to see in our culture where whatever it is that people are doing, that we value them, that it's not just based on income or, or position of prestige or power, right. but that it's on execution. Mm -hmm. and, that's right. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we have run our time. And uh, Diane, it's just been so much fun to talk with you. I really enjoyed reading the book. And I want to encourage Thank everybody to, to click on it, add it, download it, buy it. Give it as a gift uh, to folks mm -hmm. that you know that would benefit. Because it doesn't have to be this victim, like something very, very significant, uh, like Diane's story. Um, we, we can be victims because we didn't make the stoplight in time and we feel like, Oh gosh, I'm going to be a minute late now. Or, you know, there are a lot of different levels of being a victim and you do not have to do that. Mm -hmm. So buy the book, follow the strategies. Mm -hmm. um, Diane, what, uh, how, what would you uh, like to uh, leave people with as we uh, conclude our time here? Well, what you just said is uh, probably the best thing to say is you do not have to be a victim. There's no reason to be a victim. And it's not rocket science to get out of being a victim. Being a victim serves no purpose at all. It's just a waste of time, energy, and resources. So be the best that you can be, value yourself. And Scott, I appreciate you allowing me to come on and deliver this message. And it's just been a pleasure. Well, wonderful. Go ahead and hang out in the green room for a moment, and um, we'll get back together. So this is the uh, author interview series. I'm D. Scott Smith, uh, and we have been sponsored by StackGuard Plus. These thermostat covers invented by David Osk, and uh, it's just a, a great way to protect the uh, HVAC systems within the workplace. Again, People are coming back to work. This is good news. We're coming back in the office place. We're getting back together. Uh, everyone's been used to kind of setting their own temperature. They'll be looking for those thermostats. Uh, we want to maintain a little bit of control over that. And uh, the StackGuard Plus, again, with this little combination lock on there, you don't have to worry about the keys. You just have the uh, facilities manager have the code or the office manager. Uh, you can change this and set it to what makes sense. But the Satgar Plus is just a fabulous product. It is clear. It is white. It is in brushed stainless steel or blushed, brushed nickel. It is a great product. And I just thank them for, uh, for sponsoring the author interview series. And we have been talking to Diane Bogino and her book, Finding Your Bootstraps, 11 Steps to Overcoming Victim Thinking. Download the book. And with that, We'll sign off. Everyone have a fabulous day.